Hello techies, welcome to IT Tech Solution. Today in this video we will see what uh, is a snow pipe and how we can configure it uh, to automate the data load process from S3, uh, AWS S3 as an external stage. So we know that we can load the data into the target tables using copy command but that is kind of a manual process that we do. Uh, if we have external stage where we are placing some files and we want those files to be loaded into the target tables, we don't have to run the copy commands manually instead we can create this snow pipe which automates the data load process for us so snow pipe enables the data loading from the files as soon as they are available in the stage uh, and we can load the data from these files in micro batches under the hood it uses the copy statements whenever the files are available um, it will load them into the target table and the copy statement it identifies the source location as we configure it in the storage integration and the external stage so copy statement will be using those um, external stage and then it will uh, also look for the target table and then load the files into the target table now how does snowflake knows uh, that it has to trigger the pipe at certain time it is done via event notification so snowflake when we create a snow pipe uh, it creates a uh, SQS for us uh, in the Snowflake uh, platform uh, at the back end and it gives us the detail of that uh, notification channel which we use to set the connection between these two so as soon as there are new fail, uh, files being placed into s3 folder uh, we have uh, to enable the uh, event notification and use that channel which snow pipe will create for us uh, to you know push the notifications to snowflake as soon as then snowflake receives that notification it goes and check the data in the stage and it tries to run the copy command and then the snow pipe copies the files into a queue uh, from which they are loaded into the target table uh, in a continuous and serverless way. Uh, so these are uh, the theoretical aspects. Let's go and see it in, in practically how we can configure this. So first part uh, up to the creation of the storage integration and then external stage is something which I already explained in my last snowflake video I'll give the link in the description you can check that video for details so for now I'll go a little quick here uh, I won't explain each and everything uh, if you want to understand it in a better way please visit the other video and just check that once so first of all we have uh, to create a bucket so this is the bucket that I have created with all the other options as uh, default options and just created a bucket and then inside that I have just created a landing folder here so which is empty at the moment so this bucket name we would need uh, when we start creating the policies and uh, we attach that policy to the role so let's create a, a policy I'll just create a policy here uh, I'll go with the option of JSON because I just want to uh, copy the uh, JSON document from uh, their official uh, website and I just use this uh, template to create uh, the policy so in the bucket name let's just copy this bucket name and we just paste it here and in the prefix I'll just say it as landing where uh, it has to look for the files okay and here also in s3 arn I'll give the bucket name and here in the s3 prefix I will again give landing as the folder name here so this is the policy that I want to create let's just hit next here and give the policy a name I will give a name as snowflake policy and let's just create this policy once this policy is created we will go to the users uh, sorry to the roles and we will create a new role uh, I'll say that I want an AWS account role which I want to connect to uh, using another AWS account because Snowflake will create uh, this for us right so it's another AWS account but for now let me just uh, because we have to give any account ID valid account ID here let's for the time being I'll give my account ID which we can come back and update in the trust policy okay trust relationship policy so I'll just give this account name uh, here uh, which which is my account ID and then the external ID also uh, snowflake will create for us when we create the uh, storage integration so for now I'm just giving a placeholder 000 which I will come back and update in the trust relationship 
now let's attach the policy that we just now created this is the policy that we had created I'll hit next and give this role a name I will give the name as snowflake role okay snowflake role is the name of this role that we are creating now these two things are created uh, if we go to the snowflake role here uh, we have to come back into this trust relationships and we need to update this uh, trust policy here currently it's using my account right we don't want to connect to our account right we want uh, or we we want to authorize aws to connect to snowflake uh, account right so we will give the snowflake user id uh, user arn and then the external id that will be created once we create the uh, storage integration so let's remember this and we'll come back here again so in the snowflake side let's create the uh, context here so i'll just create the snowflake uh, a separate database here i'm giving it name as snowpipe db and then i'll create a schema as snowpipe schema so let's use these two to create the objects inside these two now uh, in here the role that we created we'll just copy that arn from this role and we will put it here so that the storage integration it gets created and linked with this uh, aws arn for uh, the connection or communication it has to do and the allowed location i am giving the bucket name here which we created and uh, along with the key name that is the landing folder key so now let's create this storage integration we are calling it as snow pipe integration so let's create this snowflake integration this integration is created we'll just do a describe of this uh, this snow pipe integration and we'll copy those two parameters so one is the external id let's copy this external id from here and we will put it here in the trust relationship uh, external id here so i'll just paste it here and another uh, parameter we want is the uh, im user arn of snowflake so this is snowflake users arn I will just put it here uh, so that AWS can uh, communicate to uh, Snowflake. So this is how uh, the communication between uh, these two platforms can be established. So I'll just update this policy. Okay. So this trust policy is updated. Now what we will do using this storage integration, we will create external stage using this Snowflake integration and file format also I want to give. So first I'll create a file format and the file that i'll be using is a csv file so i'll just create this uh, file format here let's create the file format and use these two things to create the external stage so i'll execute this external stage uh, command here it will create the external stage for us now these two things are created and uh, let's maybe just verify as well so snowpipe db is created snowpipe schema is created and inside that we have stage snowpipe stage is created and then file format is also created so all these things are created here successfully so let's uh, just uh, try to place a file in the landing folder uh, and just test the connection whether it is able to fetch or not i'll add some files i'll just add uh, one file here which is the csv file and then let's upload this to the bucket uh, it got uploaded successfully so i'll come back here and uh, run this query so we can fetch the data from external stage that we just now created so till this part we are all good uh, from here now what i will do is based on the data that i have uh, the csv file that i have i i have created a, a table a structure which will just now will run it but i'll just show that structure to you so this is the columns we have uh, the same thing uh, or the same number of columns we need to have uh, in the table so that we can load this file into the target table so this will be my target table i am just defining that table and giving all these uh, column names which is there in the csv file so let's just create this my table so my table is also created now let's create the pipe here so the command that is used to create the pipe is create or replace pipe and auto ingest is one parameter the that we want to make sure it should be true uh, so that it automatically starts ingesting if we keep it as false 
pipe will be suspended so we'll have to alter it and we can change it again to uh, make it true now the underlying uh, command is uh, this copy command so snowflake pipe will be executing this uh, copy command and this copy command is nothing but it is copy into the table that i just now created from the stage that we just now try to fetch the data from so this connection we know that is successful uh, so once we create the pipe it should be able to execute it and file format again i am giving it as a csv file format that we created as part of this setup so i'll just run this and create the pipe now you see this pipe is created now uh, we need to tell uh, aws to inform snowflake when to execute this pipe right so for that what we will have to do uh, as part of this pipe creation snowflake would also have created one uh, sqs notification channel for us so we need to go back to aws and tell them that hey you want to use this notification channel to send out the notification to snowflake so that it can execute this you know copy command so that is something we need to set up so as soon as a file is placed here in the bucket we want the things to be triggered so for that what we need to do is we need to come to the s3 bucket here we in the properties section we need to set up the event notifications which tells the target system that what action it has to perform if there is any new objects are getting placed in here so we'll just create an event notification here okay and give any name to this i will just give snowflake event okay so snowflake event prefix is optional if you want to restrict it to a certain folder we can give uh, i can give here the landing uh, folder because i am going to place and i want to restrict my files to be read from the landing folder and then uh, what are the event type that i want to capture i want to uh, capture all the object create events so we can play around with these things to give more precise permissions but for now i'll give all object create events so if any kind of object is created in my bucket it will uh, what it will do it will send out message to the destination now destination are uh, lambda sns or sqs but here if we check uh, the pipe that we just now created so snowflake has uh, created sqs channel for us so if you see this is the arn now one thing we need to make very sure about it is uh, you need to be uh, sure about the region where the uh, your a your snowflake account resides right so for me it is in ap southeast one you need to create basically these events and all into your uh, same region otherwise in cross regions uh, this notification might not work okay so just make sure that you are in the same region so i'll i, I am as you can see in asia pacific ap southeast one uh, in the same region i am creating these events because this channel that snowflake has created is in ap southeast one so i will have to create the event notification in the same region even though bucket is a global object but the event that we are creating should be uh, created in the respective region so I'll say that SQS queue because Snowflake has create, created an SQS channel for us. Uh, from here, uh, I want to give like a specific ARN. Okay, so let's go back to Snowflake, copy this ARN, the SQS notification ARN. I'll place that ARN here and save changes. With this, there will be an event notification created uh, for my bucket. As soon as we place uh, some files into the bucket into this into the landing folder it should trigger the pipe it should communicate via the sqs channel uh, to snowflake to trigger my pipe so let's just see so for now if we just run the query on my table you will see that there is nothing in here uh, because the file that was placed here was before the event was created right so the historical events won't be getting processed for that we'll have to place a new event here so let's just copy a file again uh, here let's just add a file uh, let's uh, give this one upload it here now the file is uploaded so if everything is fine right it should trigger that notification uh, via the channel and snowflake should come to know that okay it has to 
you know run this uh, query uh, run this copy command and it should load into the table so if we just run this uh, again uh, we will see that it hasn't uh, appeared it here sometimes it may take a while uh, to push the data we will just wait for a moment and we'll see it again we can go to this data option here uh, we can navigate to our database we can also go to schema and we can check the uh, status of the pipe so we'll go to the snow pipe schema that we created and in here we have all the options we'll go to pipes and inside this pipe you can see this is the pipe that we created if we see that it is running and it, the last ingest was just one minute ago so uh, the one that we executed was uh, captured here and there are no pending files so now if we check here uh, into my table hopefully the files should have uh, got loaded here so yes you can see that 10 files or the 10 records that we just uh, you know triggered uh, we just copied to s3 bucket is now loaded here now if we uh, one thing we can confirm from here is from this page uh, where we can check the status of pipe uh, last trigger uh, last ingestion and the status of it is running and pending files is zero so that means it has loaded another thing we can check is the snowflakes uh, db we have this account usage schema under that there is this view okay so pipe usage history if we run this you will get all the history of the same pipe which which executed for some time right so here you will also see the with the start time and end time and how many bytes or how many files it loaded so with these two things we can monitor and we can check whether our files are uh, getting loaded or not uh, meantime what let let's do one thing we'll also just upload one more file and we will again see if the count of our table executes uh, increases or not in the table uh, of the records let's see uh, we'll just upload this file uh, the file is uploaded let's check the status here last ingestion let's, let's just refresh it now once we run we'll see that the number of records has increased in the table so we were able to see it got loaded successfully as and when we add the files into the s3 bucket so this is how this everything this whole thing is uh, configured uh, I hope you were able to understand it. It sounds a little difficult at the beginning, but once you have some hands-on, it will be uh, easy. You just have to remember the concept. I hope it was a useful video for all of you. If so, please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the future videos that I'll be posting. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.